Well, good evening. For those of you that are watching online, welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. Uh, I think Valentine's Day may have had a little bit of an impact tonight, so we are just thankful that you all are here. So let's open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you as we begin this journey, uh, this Lenten journey, as we prepare for Palm Sunday and ultimately Good Friday and Easter, Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you have given us words to speak. We thank you that you have given us this time to reflect. And tonight, Father, as we go through this service and we learn more about what Lent is and why the imposition of the ashes, Father, we just ask that you be with us. For those that aren't able to be with us in person, Father, we just pray a blessing upon them as well. It, I know some are sick and had to work and other things, so we just pray for them as well, Father. We just thank you and praise you in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. So tonight, the journey does begin. We begin a spiritual journey that will span 40 days from Ash Wednesday until Holy Saturday before we have Resurrection Sunday. One could see the season of Lent as a cleansing of the soul. Just as our homes fill with things, so do we get filled with things of this world. It is also a time of reflection that is based on Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness. This time of stillness, focus, and repentance reminds me of Psalm 46.10 that says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. When we do this, we can truly focus on what is important, remembering what Christ did for us. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. So as we enter into a time of reflection today, uh, we're going to journey into Mark 1, 12 and 13. And once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended to him. Each of the 40 days of Lent represents the 40 days in the wilderness. So today we count back 40 days from Easter, excluding Sundays. And Jesus said about this in that fasting in Matthew 6, 16 through 18. When you fast, do not look som somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. Lent was once viewed as a time for Christians preparing for baptism on Easter Sunday. It was not until later that it became more the way that it is today. It is contemplative. Remembering the death that sin brings and our need for our relationship with Jesus. It is a time of sorrow, regret for our sins. It is a time of daily repentance, dying daily, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 13. We need to die to ourselves to live again. It is also a time of renewal and to celebrate. Jesus has conquered sin, death, and the grave, and that is truly something to celebrate. So now we know why Wednesday. Now the question is, why ash? Ashes have a long history in the church. They have an even longer biblical history than they do a church history. Use by the church dates to at least the 10th century, but biblically we can go back even further. Let's go all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 19. By the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust 
you will return. So let's look at what ashes or dust symbolize in the Bible. Frail to your death. Genesis 18, 27 says, Then Abraham spoke up again, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes. Sorrow or mourning. In Esther 4, 1 through 3, it says, When Mordecai learned about all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on burlap and ashes, and went out into the city, crying with a loud and bitter wail. He went as far as the gate of the palace, for no one was allowed to enter the palace gate while wearing clothes of mourning. And as news of the king's decree reached all the provinces, there was great mourning among the Jews. They fasted, wept, and wailed, and many people lay in burlap and ashes. It's also a sign of judgment. In Lamentation 3.16, it says, He was broken, or he has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. And finally, repentance. John 3.6, When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. All of these are images appropriate for the church's use of ashes for Lent. Ashes is the sign of the cross bridged between our human condition and the power of the cross. The power of the cross changes that condition forever. So where do the ashes come from? Well, usually the ashes come from the palm leaves from the previous year's Palm Sunday celebration. It takes us from celebration and then into a period of sorrow and back to celebration again. Palms are burned and then mixed with water or oil. And then the pastors use the ashes to make a cross on each person's <coughs> forehead. And we call this the imposition of the ashes, meaning uh, the imposition is to cause something to affect someone. That's what an imposition is. The purifying intent of the ashes is Related into Psalms 51 when the prophet Nathan came to King David after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and Psalms 51 tells us have mercy on me O God according to your unfailing love According to your great compassion blot out my transgressions wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from sin This allows us to make our heart right and turn back to God it's important that we understand what Ash Wednesday is and what it means. It's not just a ritual. Mark mentioned here a moment ago that we take the palm leaves from the previous year. Something that we have done as a church is from our first Ash Wednesday service in 2018, we add the palm branch ash from the previous year into what we had left over from that year. So you can almost say that we have ashes all the way back to when we began. The prophet Joel says this in two, chapter 2, 12 and 13. Even now, says the Lord, turn and come to me with all your heart in genuine repentance. With fasting and weeping and mourning until every barrier is removed and the broken fellowship is restored. Rip your heart to pieces in sorrow and contrition and not your garments. Now return in repentance to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness, faithful to his covenant and his people, and he reigns. His sentence of evil when his people genuinely repent. Let us go back to the ashes for a moment. Think about the leftover wood and ash from a campfire or a fireplace. It gets all over. The remains are best described as dead and dirty, and the leftover wood is hollowed out. Without God, we're spiritually empty. The ashes are a symbol of our need for God's forgiveness, and as a symbol, we need to remember that it is just that. The imposition of the ashes is not some mysterious, magical experience. You will, however, have some very strong feelings afterwards. We should expect to be obedient to God and His Word, to know that church is so much more than services and Bible studies, that we must go out and make a difference in our world. We can make a difference in ending violence, homelessness, racism, poverty. We'll be persecuted for our beliefs. See the promise of the open empty tomb and know that it, in the end, God wins. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes 
be for us a sign of our frailty and repentance and a reminder that only by your gracious gift we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Now if you would come forward for the imposition of the ashes. Lord, in your, in your grace and in your mercy, we come before you today. We lay our sins before you. We have this symbol that you will be placing upon us today in memory of you and in memory of the sacrifice that you have made for us, reminding us that we are too mortal and to you we shall return through your grace, through your mercy, and through your love. Our 40-day journey of Easter has begun. This is truly a season of prayer and care and share. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and in word and in deed. And by things that we have done and by things that we have left undone, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and we are truly sorry. We humbly repent and ask your forgiveness for our shortcomings. We ask by the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to have mercy on us and to forgive us, that we might delight in your goodness and your will, so that we might walk in your ways to the glory of your name. And our service today with communion. Scripture reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 5 and 18 through 25. What a God we have and how fortunate we are to have him. As father of our master Jesus, because Jesus was raised from the dead, we have been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven and the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us in the future. The day is coming when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. Your life is a journey and you must travel with a deep consciousness of God. It costs God plenty to get you out of that dead-end, empty-headed life you grew up in. He paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb, and this was no afterthought, even though it has only lately at the end of the ages, become public knowledge. God always knew he was going to do this for you. It's because of his sacrifice, Messiah, whom God then raised from the dead and glorified, that you trust God, that you know you have a future in God. Now that you have cleaned up your lives by following the truth, love one another as if your lives depended on it. Your new life is not like your old life. Your old birth came from a mortal sperm. Your new birth comes from God's living word. Just think, a life conceived by God himself. That's why the prophet said, the old grass is a grass life. Its beauty as short-lived as wildflowers. Grass dries up, flowers droop. But God's word goes on and on forever. This is the word that conceived the new life in you. This is the new life that we celebrate each time that we come together. by sharing in communion. It was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he took bread and broke it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, he took the cup later in the meal, and after filling it, said, this is the cup in the new covenant, my blood shed for the sins of many. Take and drink. 
Scripture reminds us that as often as we do so, we are to do so until Christ returns. The body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you for this time to be together as your family, brothers and sisters in Christ. We begin this 40-day journey with you in mind, with our mortality in mind, with our sinful nature in mind. So Lord, as we prepare to leave this place today, let us leave our sins behind. Let us go forward with a repentful heart for these 40 days, remembering all of the sacrifice that was made for us to wash us clean from our sins. Lord, help us to understand fully the sacrifice that was made for us to bring us into a right relationship with you, to restore your love, your grace, and your mercy in and upon us. Lord, this time of renewal, of repentance, of restoration, was all paid for at a cost. And the cost was your son, Jesus. So as we go through these 40 days, let us ever be mindful of that sacrifice that was made to wash us clean, to give us new life, new birth, a renewal, and a future with you. We praise you and thank you in all these things. In Christ Jesus' name.